Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about autogenous bone and kind of the studies that were done uh, while I was in Bern, Switzerland, and what they led to. So in general, we know autogenous bone, of course, is the gold standard. It has all of the osteoconduction, osteoinduction, and osteogenic properties. And when I went to Bern, Switzerland in 2009, we had the advantage of working uh, with a Dr. Daniel Boozer's group, where they were doing a lot of animal studies and different types of research. And the nice thing here was that we, uh, every single week or every single month, there was always these studies that were ongoing, and they would create these bone defects here, uh, five, six millimeters, and place every biomaterial you can think of in these defects. You know, allografts, xenografts, DFDBA versus FDBA, with a membrane, without a membrane, collagen membrane, you know, everything, every combination you can think of was done. And so when I went there in 2009, uh, the group had won an ITI a, a grant to do research on what is the most effective way to harvest autogenous bone. And one way to do it is to do it with a bone mill. So you basically take out a chunk of bone and then you're going to place it in a bone mill and scrunch, 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 get these little particles. Other ways to do it is to use a piezo surgery device or use a bone scraper. So just mechanically just scrape a little bit of bone or use a bone dust where you're basically just perforating the cortex and then with a suction device, you'll actually suck and get some of these little bone chips here. And when we were running these animal studies, you know, I had just joined the group and I'm a molecular and cell biologist by training as well. Um, we decided to do a separate cell study. And in this study, we looked at the sizes of the bone graft. So here you can see one millimeter, you know, the mill and the scraper are the bigger particles. You can see the scraper here forms these swirlies, okay? You can see them. The bone dust are the smallest particles and the piezo surgery are somewhere in the middle. Now, more importantly, when you looked at high resolution scanning electron microscopy, so here, this is five microns. You can start to see the collagen fibers on the mill. You can see the fiber network that's forming here, okay? On the dust and on the piezo surgery, it's completely devoid of all proteins. You don't see anything. You just see a pure hydroxyapatite uh, surface. And one of the things that we learned from this study was actually the techniques that you harvest bone where there's a lot of rinsing with saline, okay? If there's a lot of rinsing, it's going to rinse away a lot of the growth factors as well. So it's very important to understand that when you collect bone chips that you're going to use, you know, thereafter, always use something that has more proteins and little as possible um, as little as possible, some of the actual uh, saline rinse, rinsing. Um, of course, when you have more proteins, when you look at the groups here, here's the mill, here's the piezo surgery, here's a dust, and here's a scraper. You're always going to have more attachment of cells in the mill. That was the best group. And then afterwards on the scraper, that was second best. Okay. And when you look at these two devices, you know, um, the mill is a little bit more invasive, of course, right? You're going in there, this is bone, you're gonna go in, take out a chunk of bone, and then scrunch, 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 and use it. That's pretty invasive. It's a lot easier to use a little scraper, let's say, and raise a flap, and just scrape a little bit of bone without having to take out a core of bone. Uh, for your patients as well, it's, it's better for them uh, with morbidity, et cetera. And so that's typically the strategy that's utilized or taught to new clinicians that wanna use autogenous bone. Though we know that you know, the, the cellular attachment and growth factor release may be a little bit lower because of its convenience. You know, it's probably the one that's more often uh, utilized. So the summary from the study, more surface proteins on the mill and the scraper avoid harvesting techniques with too much washing. And then osteoblasts seeded on the mill and scraper attach and differentiate faster as well. Now that was the first study that was published in the Journal of Dental Research. The second study, we looked at the viability of cells. And this was, in my opinion, a more interesting study published in 2013 in Clinical Implant Dentistry and Related Research. And here, the way that the study works is that it's clear and then it goes to yellow, to orange, and then to red, depending on how many cells are alive. And what you can see here very clearly is that there's lots of cells that are alive in the mill and the scraper, and there's not as many cells alive in the piezo surgery uh, piezo surgery device in the slurry, okay? And that was a surprising finding, okay? So again, a lot more viable cells. It doesn't mean, you know, don't use the other devices or don't use the piezo surgery device, for instance. It's a great instrument. You know, it's used all the time for sinus grafting, opening lateral windows, ridge splitting, uh, bone harvesting of bone blocks. Many clinicians use it with great success. There's no question about that. 
it's to understand that while that little piezo surgery device is going off and it's bzzz and making the noises, it's damaging a lot of these cells that are no longer releasing growth factors. So if you just need a small quantity, for example, to be used you know, for retransplantation over an implant surface, et cetera, such as in contra augmentation, that's when it's better to use something that's more mechanical, such as a scraper. And you can see here the scraper will release a lot more proteins along with the mill, okay? Um, and so there's really, you know, uses for this. So the scrapers, like I said, are nice little instruments because they're very cheap. You know, you can get a bone scraper. Uh, they're about $79 and, you know, reusable, autoclavable, and you can resharpen them, which means that you get one, you got it for, you know, the next 10 years. It's got two sides to it. It's very cheap. And when you collect autogenous bone, always remember that it's free as well. Right, so you get a little scraper, you can reuse it, you sharpen it when you need to, and away you go, very, very useful piece of equipment. And here's a little video that demonstrates its use. You're just gonna scrape the surface of the bone, and as you're scraping, it makes these little swirlies, okay? So that's the typical shape that you're used to seeing. And uh, don't need to apply too much pressure, like I said, you're just basically collecting a little bit of autogenous bone from the site, as you see here, and then, um, Whenever there's blood, of course, in this environment, it's a little bit easier to pick this up, but that's basically the little scrapings that you're going to get. And those are the scrapings that you can use then to collect uh, autogenous bone chips. So that's just a little demo. Like I said, if I wanted to go a, a little bit harder and a little bit faster, right, in clinical practice, like I said, you basically have an uh, unlimited supply. You can just very quickly collect a little bit of this bone, okay? And uh, of course, the upper surface is more cortical. So it's a little bit tougher, but in any event, like I said, you scrape a little bit of bone like this, and then now I got all these bone chips that I can use for a regenerative procedure. So that's the little demo, um, and that's the autogenous bone scraper that's reusable and autoclavable. Okay, so that's a little video, and like I said, this was a little quick video that was made. Um, you know, it's very easy to collect bone chips, autogenous bone chips locally at the site. You know, I shouldn't say that there's an unlimited supply. Of course, there's not an unlimited supply by any means. But when you're doing, you know, a flap and you raise a flap and you're placing an implant or your implant's placed and it's got periimplantitis and there's some threads exposed, always remember that on that implant surface, the best biomaterial bone graft that can be used in those cases are autogenous bone. It's gonna favor the most you know, bone implant contact thereafter. So highly recommended, grab a little bone scraper, scrape, 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 put it on the implant surface. You know, if you need to do another outer layer of a xenograft, contra augmentation, you know, et cetera, you know, go for it. But on that actual surface, like I said, it's very easy if you've seen this little video here to scrape and you can see as well, you can get quite a bit of autogenous bone, enough for covering an implant surface, for instance, very easily with that little scraper, very, very quickly as well. Okay, so that's the two autogenous bone studies that were done by our group. Um, thanks everybody for watching and see everybody next week.